Have you ever wondered what would happen if you took Sniper Elite, Midsummer, Vaporwave, and threw it in a blender? Me neither, but Children of the Sun is what you would get. Children of the Sun was published by Devolver Studio and developed by Renee Rother. Before this game's release, Renee had actually not really worked on many games directly, but he was a 3D designer for a small studio based in Berlin for a bit, before one day deciding to pitch a prototype for a game he'd been working on to Devolver. Devolver would take interest in this pitch, and thus Children of the Sun was born. If Devolver sounds familiar, it's because they're also the same people behind some pretty big games like Cult of the Lamb, Enter the Gungeon, Hotline Miami, and I could go on, but what I'm saying is they're a pretty interesting company with a lot of unique and fun games under their belt. And although I found the game from its publisher, I was just as intrigued by its developer. For starters, when I was doing research, I found his Instagram account and it's pretty interesting. If the toilet-based Instagram account didn't get your attention, I think Renee Rother is a super interesting individual by himself. When I was reading articles of him being interviewed, they sounded pretty unprofessional, but sincere, which was almost refreshing to see. There was no hyping up his game to the max to sell as much as he could. In fact, he directly mentions that he's pretty bad at selling things, but instead, he talks passionately about something that he's put his life into for the past four years and hopes he can convey his work as best and honestly as possible. Admittedly, the gameplay is pretty different from what I was expecting, but I got over it pretty quickly. Oh, you thought you were using WASD to move around? Wrong. Actually, you can play this entire game with just your mouse, so your fat ass can consume Cheetos with your other hand. This was pretty jarring to me since most games I've played use WASD, but I got over it after about the first level or two. My biggest worry was that it would make the game feel boring, but it actually does quite the opposite. Instead of something like Sniper Leader Hitman, where you're placed in a sandbox and have to use stealth to maneuver around for your kills, here you can only move left and right and have to scope out your map before firing your gun. And once you've fired your gun, you'll use this bullet to kill the rest of your enemies. But you only have one bullet, so if you Lee Harvey Oswald that first shot, you're cooked buddy. Although linear, I still think the movement is pretty interesting since most of the time you can align yourself in different positions for better angles. Later in the game, you'll unlock a few upgrades to change how your bullet travels. The first one allows you to curve your bullet in the air to hit enemies who are slightly hiding behind cover. The second ability allows you to speed up the bullet in the air to pierce armored enemies. And the third ability allows you to completely change the direction of your bullet mid-air, even if you miss a target. This essentially allows you to be forgiven for whiffing your shot and allows you to shoot from way better and riskier angles. I'll admit I'm not a huge fan of puzzle-based games, but this does a lot to keep it fresh the entire time such as adding new enemy types and forcing you to use those upgrades I talked about to deal with them. On top of that, the game is pretty short. I think I beat it in about four to five hours and a lot of that was on the final level. Yeah, it was hard. The atmosphere in this game is what kept me hooked indefinitely, however. Visually, it's super retro and melancholic and constantly had me feeling like I just put LSD in my PS2 by accident in the best way possible. The soundtrack accompanying this also works wonders for setting the mood. There's no drastic changing when it goes from action to scouting. Instead, it remains fairly similar the entire time. Music is one of the biggest factors when setting the mood for anything, and this choice is interesting, since a big part of the game is about finding the coolest ways to kill enemies, and essentially glorifying this violence. Most games would have badass music playing during a gunfight to make you feel like a hero, but Children of the Sun doesn't do that. It almost rides on a line between glorifying and demonizing violence. On one hand, this woman on the toilet just told me killing people makes her horny. But on the other hand, the music almost sounds like it's ashamed of my violence. And instead of slamming another Red Bull and getting hyped, I'm just staring at the monitor and thinking about my actions. Before Rene had even worked on Children of the Sun, he developed multiple walking simulator type of games, where the main focus would be the art and environment and not the gameplay. So think of something like a 3D art exhibit. I think he did a perfect job of transferring that artistic atmosphere into a game with several unique gameplay elements. The story for the game isn't anything too special admittedly, but it's serviceable with the slightly ambiguous ending and being the professional media analyst I am, I love obscure endings. The story is told in short cutscenes throughout the missions and are shown to you kind of out of order, so this might make it confusing, but don't worry, I've got you. I'm going to tell you the story in what I'm pretty sure is the chronological order. The story begins with a man and a woman joining a group of people after reading about them in a flyer. At some point, the couple falls into the cult mindset and starts listening to whatever the leader says, and eventually, the leader takes the man's wife to, uh, <laughs> uh, converse with. 
this woman ends up becoming one of the leader's women and is impregnated. Unfortunately, however, the man is not a big fan of my YouTube channel, so he's pretty furious about this. Sometime later, that man is hunting with a young child, who I'm assuming was the child of his wife that was taken because I don't really think it's explained and that's my best theory. And I'll kind of explain why I think that is later, but anyways. While the young child is hunting, she misses a shot, but activates her power to direct the bullet towards every animal. It's here where the group realizes she's special. After discovering her powers, the leader tries to take the child. The reasons for this are ambiguous, but if I had to guess, it has something to do with killing her. The man hunting with her objects and has his leg shot off for his retaliation. The child seeing this is enraged and kills the woman who shot him. The leader grabs the child and in a fit of rage, the child gouges at his eye. The leader is obviously angered since he thinks people will compare him to Big Boss, and for revenge he scars her face as well. The man and the child are then imprisoned in a hut that's being burned down and hopes to kill them, but the child uses her powers to escape. After successfully escaping, the man who mentored the young child kills himself. The young child then takes his rifle and pursues revenge against the cult. If it wasn't obvious at this point, the character you play as is this girl. Admittedly, she doesn't have a whole lot of character, but the only character traits we do see her have are despair and anger. This is a child who was born and raised into a cult who she thought treated her as one of its own, only for them to scar her for life and effectively kill her mentor. She clearly doesn't know any life outside the cult, so her entire world was taken away from her. And that feeling of empty violence is felt throughout the entire game. Whether it be her blank stare while you move to your next target, or the ambient music never once picking up or slowing down, the game makes sure you feel her silent rage in its atmosphere. The cult slowly starts to piece together what's happening as they find more and more of their comrades dead, but the leader quickly catches word of this, and becomes increasingly frustrated that they are unable to find the girl. Eventually, we manage to track the leader down and kill him, and after that, the cult deems you as its new leader. There's a few reasons why I think the leader is your dad. The first of these is pretty much the main character says it in a dream she has. She refers to someone as your dad and it's really heavily implied that it's the leader. But you could argue that might be metaphorical since he's the leader of the cult. Everyone might call him dad. But in the mission where you kill him, he's protecting himself with multiple force fields and using magic pretty similar to yours. So I think it's entirely possible you inherited powers from him. And it's entirely possible that he just doesn't care enough to raise the kids, so he just gave it to the husband of the um, wife that he uh, conversed with. I'll admit I'm not a huge fan of the ending since I'm pretty sure the main character obviously hates this cult, so I'm not sure why she wouldn't be its leader, but to be fair, she does look traumatized when the crown is put on her, so she might not like this new role, which would fix my only real problem with this ending. It also raises some interesting questions about the cult itself and its practices. They clearly worship the leader or whoever kills him, so it's entirely possible that the leader we see in the game killed someone for his position as well, especially since he's obviously pretty violent. This story, like I said, isn't anything extremely special, but just the way it tells its story is pretty cool and revenge stories are always at least a little satisfying, so I still like it for what it is. This game is pretty short and it only took me about 6 hours to beat and that's on the longer end because I'm pretty horrible with puzzles. So if you're looking for an experience to challenge you but you can beat in one sitting, I highly recommend it. It's only $15 on Steam right now and it's worth every dollar, especially since it's better than most AAA games being released right now. And that's all for Children of the Sun but thanks for the support on the last video, we absolutely crushed the 200 sub goal. So here's Hill uh, hoping we hit 1000 soon. I'm trying to really ramp up how much I'm putting out, so stay tuned for that and drop any video suggestions in the comments and I'll make sure I look into it. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.